Uh, hi, today we're going to read a poem by Lewis Carroll, which is A Sitting on a Gate. If you want to see the rest of the poems in this playlist, there's a link in the notes below. There's also a link to related content at the end of this video. Please feel free to like and share this video. You can leave comments, you can subscribe using the button on the corner of the screen, and you can see subtitles during the poem by hitting CC. Lewis Carroll was um, an English writer, poet, humorist, who lived from 1832 to 1898. Uh, this poem was uh, published in uh, 1871 as part of his book, Through the Looking Glass. How we're going to refer to this poem is a question in itself, because in the book it says that the name of the song is called Haddock's Eyes, but the name really is The Aged Aged Man. The song is called Ways and Means, but the song really is a sitting on a gate, which is how I'm going to refer to it. I'll tell thee everything I can. There's little to relate. I saw an aged, aged man a sitting on a gate. Who are you, aged man, I said, and how is it you live? And his answer trickled through my head like water through a sieve. He said... I look for butterflies that sleep among the wheat. I make them into mutton pies and sell them in the street. I sell them unto men, he said, who sail on stormy seas. And that's the way I get my bread, a trifle if you please. But I was thinking of a plan to dye one's whiskers green and always use so large a fan that they could not be seen. So having no reply to give to what the old man said, I cried, come, tell me how you live, and thumped him on the head. His accents mild took up the tale. He said, I go my ways, and when I find a mountain rill, I set it in a blaze, and thence they make a stuff they call Roland's Macassar oil. Yet tuppence halfpenny is all they give me for my toil. But I was thinking of a way to feed oneself on batter, and so go on from day to day getting a little fatter. I shook him well from side to side until his face was blue. Come tell me how you live, I cried, and what it is you do. He said, I hunt for haddock's eyes among the heather bright, and work them into waistcoat buttons in the silent night, and these I do not sell for gold or coin of silvery shine but for a copper halfpenny, and that will purchase nine. I sometimes dig for buttered rolls, or set limed twigs for crabs. I sometimes search the grassy knolls for wheels of handsome cabs. And that's the way, he gave a wink, by which I get my wealth. And very gladly will I drink your honor's noble health. I heard him then. For I had just completed my design to keep the Menai Bridge from rust by boiling it in wine. I thanked him much for telling me the way he got his wealth, but chiefly for his wish that he might drink my noble health. And now, if e'er by chance I put my fingers into glue, or madly squeeze a right-hand foot into a left-hand shoe, or if I drop upon my toe a very heavy weight, I weep, for it reminds me so of that old man I used to know, whose look was mild, whose speech was slow, whose hair was whiter than the snow, whose face was very like a crow, with eyes like cinders all aglow, who seemed distracted with his woe, who rocked his body to and fro, and muttered mumblingly and low, as if his mouth were full of dough, who snorted like a buffalo, that summer evening long ago, a-sitting on a gate.